Hi guys! Welcome back. Uh, so around here it's almost Halloween time so I thought it would be fun to paint a seasonally appropriate model and I've got the perfect one which I've actually been holding on to for some time now. This uh, miniature here, oops I've got him backwards, turn him around, this miniature here is by Warmonger Miniatures and it's sort of a goblin or orc I guess and he's about to throw a great big jack-o-lantern and he's chewing on a bat wing. Uh, now, on the Warmonger site, this character is listed as Ozzy, and you can probably figure out why if you think about it a little bit. Um, now, he is also sort of a limited edition seasonal model, I believe, within their range, so he may not be available all the time, but he is right now, as far as I know, so if you want to pick him up, it shouldn't be too difficult. Now, most of Warmonger's models are kind of, in terms of their style, what a lot of people would refer to uh, as kind of old-fashioned looking. So it's kind of like how Games Workshop stuff used to look back around the time the company started and for quite some time after that. And before you ask, yes, there is, as far as I understand, a connection between Games Workshop and Warmonger, or there was, there is a relationship there, but it's kind of complicated, so uh, I'm not gonna go into that here. But, so, obviously, the current sort of taste in, in sculpting uh, doesn't, you know, really have orcs and goblins looking like this anymore, but the techniques I'm going to be using in terms of painting and palette and everything are going to be just as well suited to these the sort of more old-fashioned style of sculpting as to the sort of more modern-looking orc figures that you can buy uh, in stores these days. So as always, I'm starting down here by showing you all the paints you're gonna need for this model. Uh, it's a pretty colorful figure. I think almost every color of the rainbow is represented here uh, in some fashion. I'm gonna start out here by painting the goblin skin. and I'm gonna be base coating everything with a nice thick uh, layer of Vallejo black green. My first highlight now on the flash is going to be a mixture, about 50-50 of the black green and Vallejo deep green. And I'm going to be applying this pretty much everywhere, though my coat here is really very thin and over such a really dark base, uh, it's going to go on pretty transparently, so I recommend you apply at least two coats to sort of build up intensity in areas that you plan to go ahead and highlight further. My next highlight layer now is going to be just pure Vallejo Deep Green. Again, I'm keeping the paint nice and thin and I'm going to be building up several layers so that I can get sort of more gradations out of just one color of paint. Uh, at this point I'm going to also be start uh, focusing where I apply the paint a little bit more. Uh, when you've got a model like this with really defined uh, musculature and anatomy, uh, what you usually want to do is start applying your lighter color sort of towards the top of any sort of bulges or ripples or towards the outside in the case of like arm muscles where you know there's not really a top so sort of towards the sort of the outsides of the bulges and then sort of blend um, inwards so that you'll end up sort of with a highlight along that sort of that dividing line and that'll really emphasize sort of the, the dimension of the figure.
The next thing I'm gonna do is take a small number zero brush and I'm gonna go back in with some Vallejo German Camouflage Black Brown. And I'm gonna use that just to fine line a little bit and really define some areas where I know there's gonna be really deep shadow, like in his mouth and his eyeballs, give some really deep shadows under his eyes, in his ears, all those kinds of areas like that. I'm also gonna apply a base coat to his uh, toenails, fingernails, and horns. Uh, I do plan to paint those a different color later on, but I just wanna have kind of a nice base uh, to work from at this point. Now I'm going to go back to highlighting the skin and I've just mixed some olive green now into my deep green and I'm just going to continue with the same process that I was using before of basically applying thin layers and just really building them up uh, two or three times uh, just to get sort of a nice blend and also to just get extra intense sort of color on uh, certain areas of the model that I really want to be well highlighted and then keeping the color or a little subtler in other areas but just not as applying quite as many coats. My next coat here is now just pure olive green. Uh, one thing you need to keep in mind with olive green, or at least this is the case with the batch of paint I have, is that it's an extremely uh, transparent uh, shade of green, not very pigmented, and under normal circumstances, that's kind of irritating because it means, you know, getting a good uh, even coat is time consuming and doesn't, you know, just doesn't work very well. But in this case, it's a really good thing because we want sort of to get a more subtle, a blended effect, a nicer transition. So the fact that the uh, olive green is kind of thin and transparent means that we can kind of build it up gradually. We can make everything blend together really well. And also because we're applying it over a model that's already green, uh, if there's any sort of unevenness or blotchiness, that's really not gonna show up nearly as much. I'm pretty happy with my progress on the skin so far, but as those of you who watch my videos more know, I like to really push for really high contrast. Uh, so I'm gonna go up a couple more uh, layers. This coat that I'm applying now is uh, taking the olive green and I'm mixing some Vallejo buff into it. Uh, at this point though, I'm really gonna be focusing on, you know, really just defining those, you know, muscles uh, and his fingers and toes. I'm using a number zero brush for that because this model actually has quite a bit of detail uh, sculpted into it, especially in the face and some of those areas. And it's really, really helpful to have this fine brush sort of to get the best results. And uh, with these lighter colors, you can see when I'm painting the muscles, uh, I'm really still kind of doing that trick I talked about before where I'm applying 
the lightest color towards the edges of the muscles and then blending in. But sort of the lighter I get, the light that is the lighter of color I'm using, kind of the uh, kind of thinner I'm gonna keep my coat of paint and kind of the less I'm gonna try and blend it inwards. final highlight on the skin. I think you probably could have stopped with the last step and it would probably been just fine, but I just couldn't resist one more. So I'm now taking some Vallejo Buff and I've added in just a little bit of olive green. So I've got kind of this nice snot color and I'm gonna use this to apply a very extreme highlight in some really kind of crucial areas. I'm not gonna be applying this on the muscles so much and doing very much blending. I'm really gonna be mostly just kind of dotting it on the fingers and the toes and a sort of very sharp relief on the face and a few other key areas. Uh, it's, it's such a light color that uh, if you try to apply it just to the normal uh, bulges it, and try to then blend it, it's probably gonna be too pigmented and you're gonna just, it's gonna be too stark and yeah, you'll just have trouble blending it. So I recommend if you do that to be careful with it. Um, when I was done highlighting the skin, I did have some places where I felt like uh, the blending between the light and the dark was not smooth enough or it was a little bit patchy and that was probably due to the, that olive green, like I said, is uh, not the most pigmented color. Uh, if you want to kind of help unify your skin tone, if you've had that problem, I recommend uh, going back in with a glaze. Uh, I used deep green mixed with some glaze medium and just kind of going over some of those areas where the, the, the green transition isn't ideal and just kind of working over it with a bit of glaze and that'll generally help kind of smooth out any of those inconsistencies. Now let's do a little bit of black and gray. Uh, I'm going to be going back over his claws, his toenails, and his horns now. Uh, using some Vallejo Black. I decided then that I wanted them to have sort of a grayish black tone. I'm also going to be painting the bat wing real quick here with the base coat. Uh, I'm then going to go back in with some Vallejo German Gray as my first highlight on these areas. Uh, and I'm applying that to the bat too along with his nails and horns. Uh, after that I took a bit of buff and I used it to lighten the German Gray uh, and I applied that to his horns and nails and toenails. Uh, but not to the bat because I, I kind of wanted to highlight the uh, his sort of the parts of his body, I guess, the, the, the growth on his body was sort of a more warm gray shade, but I didn't want to use that on the bat. And I also wanted the bat to stay a little bit darker than those other areas were going to be. I'm not going to be doing his leather belt. It doesn't really show all that much because he's got all these studs and stuff on it, but it, it, it is visible enough that you need to do something with it. So I'm base coating it here with German Camouflage Black Brown. I'm then going to highlight it uh, first with a 50-50 mix of the German Camouflage Black Brown and some flat brown, followed by uh, another layer of kind of flat brown run kind of just along the top, and then finally a mix of flat brown and Vallejo khaki uh, as sort of a final bright edge highlight. Uh, again, don't worry about it too much because it's not going to show too terribly. Uh, once I have the belt done, I'm then going to go back in with the Vallejo khaki, and I'm going to use that to base coat all these sort of other, I don't know, he's got kind of various like bracelets and necklaces on. Uh, and a skull around his neck and I think they're all kind of like bone or made out of bone and they should all be bone colored so they're all getting a khaki base coat and I'm going to take that opportunity to uh, to also base coat his teeth uh, with the same khaki color because you know bone colored everything yeah it, you know it makes sense Once those khaki areas have dried, I'm going to apply a nice heavy uh, wash of Agrax Earthshade 
just to help really get down in the recesses between all the sort of beads and help to find the, the sculpting and that his, uh, his skull pendant. Now my first highlight in all these kind of bone areas is going to be about a 50-50 mixture of the khaki and Vallejo buff. Uh, with the beads there's not any real trick to it, there's no blending or anything. You just need a nice small brush and pretty thin paint so you can be kind of precise. Uh, you want to initially apply your paint so it goes on heaviest sort of towards the top of the beads and then you can pull it out from there and then you start building up a kind of natural highlight. As far as the skull goes, uh, it's really just about being careful to uh, pick out all the details and making sure you leave those sort of dark uh, lines sort of between his teeth and inside his nose and eye sockets, those kinds of things. Uh, and you know, you're, with this first highlight also, you're going to want to blend it out just a little bit. Once you've got that first layer on, then you can go back in with just pure Vallejo buff and just start highlighting things even further. And when you're doing this with the beads particularly, you really just want to put the paint kind of towards the top of the bead uh, and you don't just dot it on and you don't really need to kind of blend it out too much down below because you really want to have that definite sort of contrast and as the look that there's sort of a highlighted area kind of on the sort of the beads and since the light is coming from the top you want that highlight at the top of the bead. I added one final really quick highlight then to the bone and teeth areas just by mixing a buff with white. Again about 50-50 the proportions in this tutorial are pretty easy and same as last step dot it on towards the top uh, only difference is you're just going to want to be even more sparing and apply even kind of less paint when you're doing this top extreme highlight. Now for his loincloth. And you could go with a ton of different uh, colors in terms of what uh, to paint this, but I chose purple uh, and you can probably guess, you know, there's a pretty strong association here given the model and everything and, you know, so you can maybe guess why I decided to paint it purple, but I mean beyond that it really just goes very well with the green and orange and other things that we're working with here, so it makes a lot of sense. I base coated with a mixture of black and Vallejo Royal Purple, about 50-50, and then I went ahead and sort of highlighted up with slightly lighter mix so still some black in there but just more purple and then I went up to pure royal purple and continued to brighten it further by adding in just a bit of buff into my royal purple to get uh, sort of increasingly lighter shades. I wasn't really interested here in getting a really intense bright saturated purple. Uh, you could do that if you wanted to. Uh, you'll get a slightly more you know cartoonish look. It'll be maybe more uh, playful but I was actually happy to have sort of a more darker muted tone to be honest uh, but that's really up to you. You can do it to your taste. Um, I also used some of that sort of darker purple mixture to ha add some really light extra highlights onto the bat wing just because I wanted to have a little bit of extra emphasis in there but I didn't want it to just be gray. I kind of like the idea of getting just a hint of color in there but uh, it's not going to really be enough to make the whole bat wing look purple. I'm going to be doing some quick metallic areas now. First for his belt buckle and his bracelet, which I'm going to be doing in sort of a brassy kind of bronze color. I base coated these areas with a mixture of German camouflage black brown and the Army Painter Greedy Gold. Uh, the first layer should be really dark brown, as you can see, with just a hint of metallic. Uh, I then highlighted by mixing just a bit more greedy gold into my base to get a slightly lighter tone. Uh, and then finally, I took pure greedy gold and applied that uh, over top of everything in areas where I wanted to get really kind of bright gold, shiny effect. I then painted the spikes on his belt with a base coat that was about 50-50 mix of German Grey and Vallejo Air Gunmetal. Uh, maybe actually a little darker than that, I don't know. And then I just really quickly applied a pure gunmetal highlight along the top and it was as simple as that. 
these, these I didn't really feel like getting too involved with these. Uh, you can also take some of the gunmetal if you want and apply it very lightly to a few areas of the belt buckle and bracelet just to add extra shine there and a little bit more depth and complexity to your metal tones. I went in really quickly now and painted his eyes. I just base coated these using a Vallejo Black Red. I then took some um, Citadel Mephiston Red uh, and applied that, highlighted it with Citadel uh, Evil Sun Scarlet, and finally I took some white paint and just applied a little dot in each one as a kind of a reflection. All right, it's finally time to do the pumpkin. Now, I say this to last just because I know how I paint and I tend to touch the model a lot and particularly the top of the model. So if I'd applied paint here earlier, I probably would have worn it off. So that's why I waited. But the disadvantage to doing that is you have to be way more careful kind of painting around things like his fingers and his head and stuff. And you know, you really have to take a lot more care. So it's kind of a trade off with what you want to do. Uh, you'll also want to make sure you base coat down inside his eyes and mouth, or the, I should say the eyes and mouth of the pumpkin. At some point, uh, German camouflage black brown is a good color for that. Now the base coat I'm using in the pumpkin here is going to be a mixture of Vallejo uh, black red and Citadel Jokero orange. Uh, over the black, it's still kind of coverage is still a little spotty, even though we're using a base color here. So you'll probably need to go back in and apply another layer just to get everything nice and smooth. I'm then going to apply a first highlight to the pumpkin of pure uh, Jokera orange. Uh, this is a base color, so it's pretty pigmented as far as that goes, but it is also orange and orange is never very pigmented. So when you apply this, you're going to always end up with sort of a slightly uneven coat. So your main focus when you're painting is to make sure that you, you're, you're nice and even with your application. You can always go back in later and build it up and make it more intense. And that's actually a good thing with this pumpkin because it means that, you know, you can get more tonal variation just using one color here. Uh, so, you know, that's good. And you can see I'm really uh, going to be building up sort of more layers towards the top of the head, as you would expect, because there's more light hitting, and I'm going to be not worrying about making it quite so bright, sort of more down towards the base. I'm going to continue highlighting the jack-o'-lantern with a Citadel Fire Dragon Bright. And if you thought the pigmentation on the last orange was bad, well, this is a whole nother level of patchy. So uh, this one is really, really tricky to get a nice smooth coat. You're really going to have to work pretty hard to get a good result. Um, and I, But I did take advantage of the paint's transparency to really build it up more strongly in some places with more layers and kind of blend it out and have it a little bit different in other areas and that is kind of nice and I, I went and put on quite a few coats of this because I really wanted to get a nice bright orange effect here I wanted it to feel strong and colorful I wanted to get even more sort of brightness and highlight to my jack-o'-lantern at this point so I took and mixed some Vallejo Buff into my Fire Dragon Orange and that had a really nice added benefit because the buff paint is more pigmented so it helped make the coverage of the orange a little bit better. I used it as an edge highlight around sort of the mouth and um, kind of eyes and nose really to emphasize that but also on the ribs. I found it worked really well to sort of apply it thinly along uh, sort of the, the edge of one ridge and then blend it towards the middle and then just do that all the way around so you look like sort of one surface of each ridge is more highlighted and brighter and that just gives kind of a nice effect. I then really quickly painted the pumpkin stem. I base coated it with the Vallejo flat brown that I was already using and then I highlighted it uh, first by mixing a little khaki into my flat brown and applying that in there and then I went ahead and added some buff into that mix to make it even lighter and applied that 
kind of just more towards the top and kind of with some streaky lines just to make, you know, look like there's some texture and kind of naughtiness in the wood. I finished finally with some almost pure buff, which I really dotted kind of roughly on the top and used this kind of an edge highlight as well, just to get kind of a final bright look. So here is the finished kind of old school goblin bat eater figure all done. Uh, this model was a lot of fun. I probably shouldn't have to tell you that. It's always exciting when you get to work with bright uh, colors and kind of have a palette that's, you know, kind of outside your normal range where you've got like a bright orange and purple and green and all that. You, you don't necessarily get that on most models and certainly not historical stuff. Uh, this green skin tone uh, is one of many options that you could do for orcs and goblins. I mean, and I hope you like it. And I hope it's one that you will want to try on yours. Obviously, you can go in all kinds of other directions and it'll look equally great. You could go for more black, greens, go darker. Uh, you could add in, in more green, I mean more yellow in your green, or start with a lighter base when you begin so that the whole look ends up lighter. I mean, there's just so many different things you can do and they're all gonna look really good. and all produce really different results and I think that's one fun thing about orcs and goblins is how much variance you can actually do in their skin tone. There's definitely not one kind of right or wrong way to do them and that's really a lot of fun and it's kind of easier I think for people maybe to come up with really clearly different green palettes than say on human skin where the differences between skin tone particularly at 28 millimeter are going to be a lot more subtle so uh, it's it, it's much more difficult sometimes to sh show really clear distinctions between individuals um so anyway i hope you had as much fun watching this guy being painted as i did doing him uh and uh if you want to like this video please click the like button of course or share it with your friends leave me comments uh with what you thought uh, and of course subscribe to my channel so you can keep up with the latest updates so i think that's all for now uh have a very happy halloween and i will see you next time